السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless every single one of us And we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to grant us forgiveness on this eve This beautiful eve of the month of Ramadan the topic I have chosen to cover this evening is the topic of sustenance, the rizq that we always speak about, the livelihood that we all go out in order to attain and to achieve, that which comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran has discussed the issue of livelihood and sustenance in great depth. And definitely there are many angles, more than 20 to 25 angles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed the issue of sustenance. To start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that He is the provider. He alone is the one who controls the sustenance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, قُلْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Ask them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Who is it that provides you with sustenance in the skies or on earth? And later Allah says, they will respond to you that Allah, even though they are disbelievers, they know that there is a supreme deity who is in complete control of the sustenance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that everyone from the moment they are born, their sustenance is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the fact that everything on this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written its sustenance and it is all written in a clear book. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those who are greedy, but rather from those who can appreciate the sustenance that Allah has written for us. Then Allah says, Allah يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides sustenance to the people and He is the one subhanahu wa ta'ala He is the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who grants more or less to various people This is the, the qudra and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ They have become happy and pleased with the provisions of this dunya. But these provisions of the dunya, they are only provisions. People who become amused by the dunya do not realize that it's just for a short period of time. That which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more everlasting. In Surah An-Nur, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ It is Allah who decides to give whomsoever He wishes to give without even accounting, without any limits, limitless giving. Sometimes a person is given so much by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in fact, if we take a careful look, every single one of us is given a lot. Inshallah, we will come to that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that if He created you, He is going to provide for you. If Allah created you, He is going to provide for you. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allahu alladhi khalaqakum thumma razaqakum thumma yumitukum thumma yuhyikum it is Allah who has created you and He is the one who will provide for you. 
and he will cause your death and thereafter that he will resurrect you may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deeper understanding then there is another angle from which Allah discusses the issue of sustenance Allah says I have given some people more than others for a reason Imagine that is a point that Allah has discussed. Wallahu fadala ba'dakum ala ba'din fi rizq. When it comes to sustenance, Allah says, some of you have been given more than others. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is possible for him to have given everyone a lot. But if he gave everyone a lot, they would all have wealth. They would need to now compete in something else. They would start competing in oppression. They would become haughty and oppress this one and become powerful. You know, when a person has a lot of wealth, what happens is there is no stoppage to it. If I were to tell you at this moment, if you have 100 million rands, will you stop there? You might say, yes, I'll stop. I'll retire forever. Believe me, when you get 100 million, you will want to work more. If you get it this year, you will then want 200 billion and more than millions and trillions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah says, look, We've given some more and some less. When people have got a lot, what happens after a certain time, it is no more about money. Now they've got. Now it becomes about control. They want to use that money to control. Then it becomes an issue of authority. They want to have that authority. They want to continue. They want to be like those who now have more than the others. And they want to go on on this globe as though they are in charge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. This is why the one who is the best in the eyes of Allah is he whom Allah has given and still he is humble and down to earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all and keep us humble inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to call out to him for sustenance. We need to make dua to Allah for sustenance and nobody else because no one else controls sustenance besides Allah. Listen to what he says about those who call out to others for sustenance. In Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ وَاعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ those whom you are calling out to besides Allah for sustenance, they cannot give you even a pea. They cannot give you anything at all. So call out to Allah who controls the sustenance for indeed you are going to return unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us inshallah from his bounty and sustenance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that it is our duty to be thankful. Once we get, we must thank Allah for whatever we have. And we should not extend our hands to others. We should not extend our hands to others, amazingly. And we must not extend our eyes to others, becoming jealous of what Allah has provided others. Don't ever compete or compare yourselves with what Allah has given others, because that is a form of ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl. He says, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا وَاشْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Eat from what Allah has provided you on condition that it is halal, which means that is another angle from which sustenance is looked at. Do not consume that which is haram. Eat that which is pure and halal and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given you. We need to thank Allah for having made certain types of wealth haram. Because the broader picture is such that if we had to engage in that which is haram, we would be oppressing one another. The rich would become richer. The poor would become poorer. Take a look at interest. Take a look at Take a look at the meat of a pig, for example. All these have been prohibited for reasons best known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must thank Him that He has prohibited certain items and we must appreciate the halal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, after He says, be thankful, He tells us, if you are thankful, do you know what I will give you? The result of thankfulness and gratitude is increase. 
لئن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولئن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد If you are going to be grateful to Allah by obeying His commands and abstaining from His prohibitions, by trying your best to please Him, Allah says He will grant you increase. He will give you increase in what He has provided you. And when you are ungrateful, showing ingratitude to your Creator, He says He will overtake you with punishment. May He not do that to me, may He not do that to you. Amen. May He make us from those who are thankful at all times. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that wealth is a test. It's not always just something that you can have. No, it's a test from Allah. And the sustenance provided by Allah includes your children. Your children are also part and parcel of what Allah has given you. It is part of your rizq, part of your sustenance. Because some people, Allah has not given them children. And some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to keep them single and to close their lineage at that point. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this eve to grant all those who are married for years and are trying to have children, to grant them children and offspring who will be the coolness of their eyes. And all of us whom Allah has provided us with children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His mercy make those children a point of coolness for all our eyes. And let's make a further dua. Those who are not married, may Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes through whom, inshallah, you will be getting offspring who will then also be coolness of your eyes. Allahu Akbar. We don't want to leave anyone out, inshallah. The reality is then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, and He repeats this verse in Surah Al-Taghabun, وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً You should know that your wealth and your offspring, they are actually a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not allow your love for your children exceed the love you have for your Creator. Do not allow the love you have for your wealth increase or exceed the love you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first, and then everything else, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that there are certain people who have been granted. Sometimes you have the kuffar who are given a lot of wealth and happiness in this dunya. And one might ask, how come we are Muslimin, we are Mu'mineen, we believe, we try hard, we, we are trying to please Allah. And there there are people who are transgressing day and night and they have a lot. So Allah responds also saying, وَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَأَوْلَادُهُمْ This verse is in Surah At-Tawbah. Don't let the fact that they have lots of wealth and lots of children deceive you. Don't become amazed by their children and their wealth. If they are transgressing the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you know what he says? He says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يُعَذِّبَهُمْ في الدنيا وتزهق أنفسهم وهم كافرون. Allah wants to punish them through their wealth and through their children. سبحان ربي الأعلى. So sometimes Allah wants to punish someone through their children and through their wealth. He will give them lots of children and lots of wealth, and the punishment, the source of it, will be the children or the wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why we say, be happy with what Allah has decided for you. If He decided you are not having children, no problem. You will surrender to that degree. If He decides you will only have a thousand rands a month, Alhamdulillah, we are happy with that. We will thank Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, do not be deceived by that. Look at Abu Lahab in Surah Al-Lahab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he was a very rich man. He was one of the kuffar of Quraysh. Allah says, مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَالُهُ وَمَا كَسَبَ His wealth and whatever he earned did not help him in any way. He is still sitting in Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Who would want wealth like that? Wealth which makes a person so arrogant that they cannot accept the truth. And this is the meaning of the term arrogance in the Sharia. When you despise people and you reject the truth, that is what is arrogance. Not when you wear smart clothing and you drive a good vehicle and you have a nice house. No, if you have that, but you are down to earth, you respect all people and at the same time, you accept the truth when it comes to you. Then that wealth is not a point of misery for you, but rather it is a point of mercy, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that 
He will test us with lack of wealth. He will take away some of our money, some of our sustenance, some of our children. He will take away some of the gifts He has given us in order to test us. Listen to what He says in Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, Allah says, I will definitely test all of you with lack of produce, with lack of wealth, with taking away the lives around you. Allah will test you with lack of produce. So many things He says with your health. He will test you with so many things He says. Good news to those who bear patience, those whom when Allah has inflicted them with something, they say indeed we belong to Allah and unto Him is our final return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He's going to test us. Then continuing on that particular topic, Allah says regarding certain people, that when we give them, then they forget us. Suddenly we have to take things away so that they can remember us. When a person sometimes has no problem in their lives, they carry on like they're not even Muslim because they're too happy in this world. So Allah wants them to turn to Him through His mercy. He puts a difficulty in their lives. If that was the only way they were going to raise their hands for Allah, Wallahi, it is a, it is a good deal. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ فَذُو دُعَاءٍ عَرِيضٍ Allah says, man is such that when we give him, then he forgets us. He carries on on this earth on his side as though he is not even on the straight path. May Allah protect us. And then when evil comes in his direction, he makes a broad dua and he continues making big duas. You know, it reminds me, sometimes the imam is making a dua and some people are saying, this man is taking so long for the dua. Whereas there are others whom the same dua will be too short for them because they've got no problems. So we need to understand, let us never be, let us never be miserly and stingy when it comes to calling out to our own creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Now this is the point I had mentioned slightly earlier. Every one of us has been given so many gifts by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we were to try and count them, we would not succeed in doing that. Allah says, and this verse appears more than once in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, as well as in Surah An-Nahl. If you are going to try and count the gifts of Allah upon you, and the favors of Allah upon you, the sustenance He has provided you, the livelihood He has given you, the organs He has given you, everything He has provided for you, you will never ever be able to circumscribe the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, Nay, but man is very, very ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who are ungrateful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as I mentioned moments ago, don't look at what Allah has provided others. Don't look at what Allah has given others and then become from amongst those who says, Ya Allah, you didn't give me, you gave him. No, if you happen to see what Allah gave others, you make a dua. Ya Allah, provide them with barakah, give them even more and give me as well, Ya Allah. That's a good dua. You see? But instead of saying, Ya Allah, take it away from them, give me. Ya Allah, why didn't you give me? No, that becomes questioning Allah's decree and His divinity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong Muslims. Allah says, in Surah Taha, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِّنْهُمْ Don't stretch your eyes 
in such a way that you are looking at what Allah has provided others. Allahu Akbar. We don't want to do that. We will, our eyes will be with blinkers, inshallah. We will look at what Allah has given us and we will be happy. Whether it is your sustenance, whether it is your spouse, whether it is your children, whether it is your health, whether it is whatever it is. Allah says, we should look at those when it comes to that type of issue. We should look at those who have less than us. And we should compare ourselves with those who have less than us. And when it comes to acts of worship, look at those who are achieving more than you. That person is so pious. They are spending so long in salah and so on. The idea is acts of worship. We want to get closer to Allah by looking at those who are higher. We can aim somewhere. And when it comes to the dunya and this world and the sustenance and wealth and so on, we look at those who are below us so that we can thank Allah. You don't have shoes, look at those who don't even have feet. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. I also mentioned moments ago that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if I had given everyone, if I had given everyone, they would have then become those who want to oppress. Allah says in Surah Shura, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَّا يَشَاءُ Allah says, had we given everyone, everyone, lots and lots of wealth, they would have started becoming haughty on this earth and oppressing one another. So Allah says, that is why we just send down a small portion for everyone. So you can at least be busy trying to earn something. If everybody doesn't have to go to work because they've got a lot of wealth, what will they do? They will start doing mischief. May Allah protect us. Because how many of us are ready to come and sit in the masjid because we don't go to work? I don't ever see unemployed people coming to sit in the masjid in big, big numbers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the steadfastness before everybody else. And then may he grant every single one of us steadfastness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we should not be wishing for what others have been given because sometimes it will be a means of their punishment. And if you were in it with them, you would have also been punished. You know, Qarun was a man at the time of Musa alayhi salam. He was given a lot. So there were some people who used to wish for his wealth. And the knowledgeable used to tell them, don't wish for his wealth. Come on. He is an oppressor. Why are you wishing for his wealth? Look at what he's doing. He's causing problems for everyone. He wants to control the society and the community. He wants to use his money to come and dictate to others what to do. Allah protect us all. So one day Allah punished him by causing him to be swallowed by the earth. The following morning when everyone got up, do you know what they said? Lawla Oh, just as well Allah didn't give us. If He gave us, we would have also been swallowed with the earth just like Him. Subhanallah. This is why we say, let's be thankful for where Allah has put us, the position He has actually put us in. Then Allah says, what is it that will result in your sustenance going away? There are two ways in which your sustenance goes away. One is decrease in volume. And the other is decrease in blessings. When we say decrease in volume, what that means is, instead of 30,000 rands, you now find that you are only earning 2,000 rands. Something went wrong. Or you had a huge amount of money and something went wrong, you suffered a big loss. That is one way of decrease in sustenance. The other is, from 30,000 you went to 50,000 and 100,000. Physically, it might seem to you that you've got a lot. But when you are engaged in sin, there will be no blessing in your wealth. You got a hundred thousand. Where did it go? I was paid just yesterday a thousand rands, for example. And already today, I can't even, I don't even know where it went. Subhanallah. This is part and parcel of the snatching away of the blessings from the wealth that Allah gives a person. For what? Allah says, because of the sins that you commit. Listen to what Allah says. He says, when I've given you, I don't take it away. Unless you've committed something that deserves me to take it away from you. Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, Allah will never ever take away the gifts He has given a person 
until and unless their deeds have changed to the degree that they deserve the snatching away. May Allah protect us all. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of Saba. Allah says, they were given a lot, they were given gardens, they were given so much by Allah, but they turned away from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they earned the wrath. So Allah says, فَأَعْرَضُوا فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَيْلَ الْعَرِمِ وَبَدَّلْنَاهُ بِجَنَّتَيْهِمْ جَنَّتَيْنِ ذَوَاتَيْ أُكُلٍ خَمْطُ وَأَثْلٍ وَشَيْءٍ مِّنْ سِدْرٍ قَلِيلٍ ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُ بِمَا كَفَرُوا وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ Allah says those people of Saba, we gave them gardens of good fruit. Because they turned away, we changed those gardens with gardens that could not produce anything meaningful. And we punish them in every single way. And that is how we punish those who are ungrateful. Allah says, do we punish anyone besides those who are ungrateful? May Allah not make us ungrateful. Really, if you are a grateful person and you are suffering calamity, it's not a punishment. It is a gift of Allah to increase your status and your spirituality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah says to us regarding sustenance in the Quran that he does not need sustenance. Allah is the provider. So he asks us to give. And he says, don't think you're giving me. You're actually doing yourself a favor when you give. We normally say, when you give a poor person, don't start thinking I've given the poor man. No, thank the poor man that Allah, in fact, thank Allah to create the poor man. Because if it was not for that poor man, who was there to accept your charities? There will come a time when they, everybody will be rich. There will come a time when every single person on earth will be rich. And there will be no one to give zakat to. Not at all. May Allah protect us. I see the Amin is very soft because everyone wants to be rich. May Allah protect us again and again inshallah. Let's say Amin. MashaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the one who has he does not need our wealth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ma uridu minhum mir rizq wa ma uridu an yut'imun i don't want any sustenance from any one of my creatures nor do i want them to feed me allahu akbar some people when they give food as sadaqah and fidya and charity, they think they are feeding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, they are doing themselves a favor. Really, it's an act of worship. When we read salah, when we pray, we are actually praying for our benefit, not for the benefit of our creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are not lazy when it comes to prayer, especially in the month of Ramadan. I remember making mention and this evening I met a young man known as Abdul Razak. He told me, you know, I, I heard you were talking about Abdul clock the other day. Now, what, what is the meaning of Abdul clock? What I said is we are supposed to be Abdullah, the worshipper of Allah, and Abdul Rahman, the worshipper of the most merciful, and Abdul Razak, the worshipper of the one who sustains. But some of us, every two rakaat, we're looking at the watch. We're looking at the watch. The Imam takes long, we're looking at the watch. We're looking at the clock. We become known as Abdul clock. Why? Because we are enslaved by the clock. Allahu Akbar. We are worshippers of the clock. Every little while we're looking at the watch. Let's leave those clocks at home when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I gave an example the other day and I think it's important for me to repeat it. The worst place on earth is the toilet. When we go to the worst place, we never look at how long it takes. The longer we stay there, the better we feel. So why is it that when we come to the best place on earth, which is the masjid we want to look at our clocks isn't that directly from shaitan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from amongst those who don't even realize this example i gave is so powerful i'm sure when you go home lying on your beds you will be thinking of what i said and the next time you visit the place you will think again may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this surah in fact in surah al-baqarah Allah is commanding us to spend. I told you moments ago, he doesn't need it. He says, look, you must spend. Why must you spend? Before it is too late. That's another angle. Before it is too late, one day a day will come when you will die and then you will say, oh Allah, send me back. Let me quickly give sadaqah. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnankum min 
قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون الله says oh you who believe spend from what we have provided you before a day comes when nothing shall help you no deals will help you you are written for Jahannam there is no amount of dealing you can do outside the court out of court settlement does not exist on the day of Qiyamah it is now you want an out of court settlement for that day deal with it today may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding in one other verse in surah in another surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah says, spend before the day comes when death will overtake you and then you might tell your creator, Ya Allah, delay me for a little while so I can go back and quickly give sadaqah. Allah says, وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا When your fixed time comes, Allah will never delay it for those reasons. So when you want to spend, spend now. May Allah make us from those who are generous. Remember, your generosity in charity will never decrease your wealth. It will never ever decrease your wealth. But if you don't give and you are miserly, it will decrease your wealth. There is a simple example when it comes to sustenance. Whatever you have spent, your name is already written next to it. This person spent so much. So you rather write your name next to your wealth. Whatever you have not spent, as soon as you die, it goes to someone else. Someone else's name is written next to it. So you'd rather spend it now than to actually wait and, and pack up the wealth and keep it and not even give your own children and your own offspring. I'm not saying spoil them. You can teach them a lesson or two. But at the same time, be generous. Look after the poor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. Then Allah speaks about the rizq of the people of Jannah is also mentioned in the Quran. So powerful. I'm only going to mention one verse. And that is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, regarding the, the sustenance in Jannah, in paradise, Allah says, كُلَّمَا عُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ الرِّزْقَ قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي عُزِقُنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهَا Allah says, every time the people of Jannah and Paradise get some form of sustenance, they will tell themselves or they will say, isn't this the same thing we just got before? Isn't this what we got? Allah says, it will look similar to their eyes but the taste will be very different. Why is that the case? Because in Jannah, whilst you are thinking of the orange, I don't even know if we will be able to think of oranges because the fruits of the dunya, they probably do not exist at all in, the, in Jannah in this form. They are probably in another form altogether. So when you are thinking of an orange, that orange will come to you. If for a moment your mind goes through a little thought that what if this orange was actually purple? It will start becoming purple. Amazing. That's Jannah. It will start looking purple to you. And thereafter, if you start thinking, what if this could taste like a strawberry? Automatically, the strawberry taste will be going down your throat. That is Jannah. Whatever you desire is already there for you. It is at your service. Subhanallah, I haven't even described a fraction. And still I see the smiles. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Jannah. Whatever you think of, automatically it will already be coming in your direction. So this is why when you think of something, it's there. And suddenly it's tasting different. The reason why it's tasting different is your mind and your thought changed. So while your thought is changing, on your tongue, it came like an orange. And suddenly a little bit further up, it was like an apple. And going down, it was like, what do you want to say? Maybe granadillas? May Allah protect us all. May He grant us inshallah the sustenance of Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the provider. He can give you fruit outside the season. Listen to what happened to Zakaria alayhi salam. You know, he was looking after Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. She used to make a lot of dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, if you want sustenance, make dua. Call out to me, I will provide. Don't ever lose hope in my mercy. So whenever Zakaria alayhi salam used to go to the mihrab where Maryam alayhi salatu was salam was, he used to see different fruits which were out of season. At that time, where would she have got it from? 
Us today communications are such that we can get oranges from Brazil when it's not even the season of oranges here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zakaria alayhi salam asked her, Hey, where did you get all this fruit from? He asked, where did you get this from? She said, Wallahi, this is from my creator. He provides this for me. Allah gives whomsoever he wants without a limit. Amazing. And this is when Zakaria alayhi salam thought of an amazing point. I told you that children are also part of your sustenance. Let me tell you what he thought. He was an old man. He didn't have male children yet. His wife was already old. So he looked at this fruit and he said, this is off season. If Allah can give fruit out of season to this young lady, then surely if I make similar duas, Allah will give me children, though I am, so to speak, off season. And out of season. And so is my wife. We are old. We are off season. So that was the similarity. Allah says, Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbah. When Zakariya saw that, alayhi salam, he said, Hey, let me also make dua to Allah. He made dua to Allah, and lo and behold, he was granted a child, Yahya. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. So much so that he was actually shy at one stage that, Hey, my wife is so old, I am so old, and we're going to be blessed with a child. Wallahi, don't ever be embarrassed. That is the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is His power. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Then Allah says, that you are not allowed to kill your children fearing poverty. You are not allowed to practice birth control fearing poverty. So for that reason, you're not allowed to practice birth control. This verse is repeated more than once in the Quran. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقًا Don't ever kill your children out of poverty, thinking that they are going to steal from your wealth. Allah says, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ We will provide for you and we will provide for them. Because the person is already poor, so they want to dump their children, thinking that, you know what, if we dump this child, at least we will not be, have to work hard to come and look after the child. Allah says, no, we will provide for the child. Don't ever do that. So that is out of poverty. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah says, you are not poor, but you are fearing poverty. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقَ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ don't ever not have children just because you are fearing you are fearing poverty may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us let me tell you a simple example a man who has 10 children and he has given them a good upbringing and all 10 of them are working long term he will be able to get 10,000 rands from every one of them every month how much is that man worth? 100,000 rands a month, Allahu Akbar. But a person who only had one child fearing poverty, and if that child happens to be a drug addict, may Allah protect us, he will curse himself when he's old and say, I should have had a few more children, Allahu Akbar. So that is why work according to the plan of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, there is permissibility of spacing out your children under certain circumstances. There is permissibility of controlling birth under certain circumstances. But never ever for the reason of money and wealth. They will come with their own. Allah will open your doors. You watch, you wait, you see. اعلم أن نفس لن تموت حتى تستكمل رزقها. Nobody shall die until their entire sustenance written for them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be completed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people they give preference to business over Allah. On a Friday, Allahu Akbar, Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهُوَنِ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ رَازِقِينَ 
they are sitting and listening to the khutbah. Some of them, they suddenly witness a caravan, they see an opportunity for business, they leave you standing, O Messenger of Allah, and they run to do their business. Tell them what is with Allah is far better than this business. Allah is the provider. Leave that business even if you are suffering a loss. Come and when it is your duty, when your duty calls, then you need to respond to that particular duty and obligation to your own Creator. Allahu Akbar. How can we run away from salah thinking that the, the, the creator whom we are reading the salah for is not going to provide us and therefore we want to go and see to a business deal while salah is becoming expired. That is prohibited, that is haram. Then there is the second last point I'd like to raise is how can I achieve increase in my sustenance? That's a question I need to know, you need to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ The same surah, Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Allah says, you want success in your wealth? Remember Allah a lot. Remember Him often. Remember Allah and make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even during your business times. And at all times, Allah will grant you success. Then Allah says, if you fear Allah, if you are conscious of Allah, He will grant you sustenance from a direction which you had never imagined. He says in Surah Al-Talaq, Allah says, whoever is conscious of Allah, He will create ease for that person. And He will grant them sustenance from a direction they least expected it. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more conscious. So, if you want wealth, you need to get closer to the owner of wealth, who is Allah, not some individual who might be holding a few rands for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Another means of achieving wealth is to engage in istighfar. Seek Allah's forgiveness a lot, every single day, and you'll notice there will be barakah in your sustenance. Look what Allah says in Surah Nuh. Allah told his people, Fear Allah, meaning uh, engage in, in tawbah, engage in repentance, ask Allah's forgiveness, and Allah will open the skies for you. Ask Allah's forgiveness and He will grant sustenance to you. He will grant you children. He will give you a lot. He will give you gardens and He will give you rivers. That is if you engage in repentance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. And the last point I'd like to mention for this evening is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives examples of the prophets of Allah. And Allah makes mention of their du'as. When they made a du'a, Allah responded the du'a. Why? For many reasons, they were prophets, they used to engage in istighfar. When they made a dua, they used to make a dua, not only for themselves, sometimes not even for themselves when it came to sustenance. Look at what Ibrahim alayhi salam says. In fact, Musa alayhi salam in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَإِذِ اسْتَسْقَى مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ When Musa alayhi salam asked for water, Allah doesn't say for himself, لِنَفْسِهِ No, Allah says he asked for water for his people. Allah says, immediately we responded and we let 12 springs gush forth and each one of them were drinking from those springs. Amazing. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made a dua for Makkah, for the city of Makkah. Nothing grows there. Even the dates don't really grow properly in Makkah. They grow in Medina and in Ta'if and they grow in the other areas. But in Makkah, the dates of Makkah are not as grand as the dates of Medina. Subhanallah. But even without that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah Akbar. He says, O oh Allah, make this city a secure city. Today Makkah is very safe, very secure, inshaAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He made a dua to say, Ya Allah, grant its inhabitants produce, good produce, a lot of sustenance. Give them, sustain them with good produce. Today, every fruit from the corners of the world is found in Makkah. The grapes of Cape Town are bought in the bin Dawoods of Makkah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Look at the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah gave 
because he made a dua for them. He didn't make a dua for himself alone. Allahu Akbar. I think sometimes we become stingy. Ya Allah, give me, give me, give me. Ya Allah, give me, give me, give me. And what happens? We forget the term us. It is all of us. Ya Allah, give us, provide us. And if we say us, let's be genuine because the man next to you will also get, inshallah. The man next to you will also get. You make a dua, Ya Allah, give me a Ferrari, for example. You'll notice your neighbor get the Ferrari before you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. And the last verse I'd like to mention, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he made a dua in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Isa alayhi salatu wa salam said, Qala Isa ibn Maryam, اللهم ربنا أنزل علينا مائدة من السماء. He raised his hands and he says, Oh Allah, grant us a laid table full of food from the heavens. Just drop it down. Just drop it down by your power, by miracle, miraculously. And Allah did it. Subhanallah. He gave them that table laid with food. Subhanallah. Today when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do we have that yaqeen? Ya Allah, give me from the heavens, Ya Allah. Drop it from the skies, Ya Allah. Drop it from the skies. We might not be awliyaullah. We might not be that close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But believe me, if you have the conviction in your heart, the creator, the owner shall provide for you without a limit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant myself and yourself every form of goodness. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. 